Okay, so today we're going to be talking about polygons on the coordinate plane. You can plot points that what I have here is the coordinate plane and we have the Y axis going vertically and we have the X axis going horizontally. You can plot points on the coordinate plane and when you connect the dots, they will make a shape. In this case, we have a polygon called QRST. The way we name a polygon is we name it by the letters that correspond to its vertices. These are vertices, one vertex, many vertices. So it has four vertices, four corners. So that tells me that it's going to be a quadrilateral because it has four vertices. So I will first by start by plotting these four points and connecting the dots. So I see that from my grid, if I look here, it has a space and then 20. So from that, I know that each grid is worth 10. And I like to just take a minute and fill in the missing numbers, especially on the negative side, because I know if I'm in the middle of a problem, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm looking at the y-axis. The y and x-axis don't have to have the same spacing, but I notice on this well problem, it does. Because every other is worth 20, that means every one is worth 10. Again, I'm going to fill in a few because right now I'm thinking about it, and later on I'm going to get thinking about other things and I might make a mistake. <laughs> so I'm going to start with you. Point Q says the coordinates are 10, 20. So X is 10, Y is 20. Always the X first and then the Y alphabetically. Here's 10. Start over on, start from the origin. I go over to 10 and then we go up 20. And right there, what I will do is I will label that as point Q. 10, 20. Now I want to see point R. R is negative 10, starting again. I'm going to label that origin. It's a good thing to keep track of. Back to the origin. Origin means start. Always start from the origin. So I'm going to go over to negative 10, and I'm going to once again go up 20. I'm going to try and keep it straight here, and I'm going to put the letter R there. So I have two points right now, and I can. Okay. I can connect those two, and I can see that I've got one side of my polygon already. I'm going to do point S now. Point S is negative 10, negative 10. So I'm going to go over negative 10, and that second negative 10 tells me to come down. Put that there. Make <laughs> that point. It keeps wobbling. Hope you don't get seasick. It's like a wave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to go over to point T. T is 10, negative 10. So again, from the origin, over 10 and then down 10, right there is where I need that point. And then I know I'm graphing a polygon because that is what the problem said I was doing. Oh, see, I should have kept my number one rule, which is use a ruler to draw a straight line. Take a straight edge. Okay, so now I have a polygon and this polygon is Q, R, S, T. It's all of the letters here. What I need to do, I see the problem is asking me to find the perimeter in the area. Perimeter means space around. Well, maybe not space around, distance around. That's a better word. Distance around a shape. So if I wanted the perimeter, it would be the length of everything here. So I can see now from this, I'm going to need to know the lengths of the shapes. We're going to figure that out again. The next thing it wants me to find is the area. And since it's a polygon, and I see it's a four-sided polygon, I know that my area is going to be base times height. So once again, I'm going to need to know those bases and heights. So it's time for me to be thinking about those distances a little bit. And change colors here for just a second. Think about the distance between Q and R. This distance is going to tell me, the distance will tell me the length of that side. I know from Q and R 
they have the same y value. So to find the distance, I need to compare the x values. To go from 10, to go from 0 to 10, the absolute value is 10. And to go from 0 to negative 10, the absolute value is 10. So I know that that distance is 10 plus 10 or 20 for that point. I'm going to check the other side. I want to check the side from Q to T. And by the way, if I want to know a side, I would write it like this. That means a line segment QT. And this would be line segment RQ or QR, either way. QT. So if I go from Q and T, if I look between point Q and T, I notice this time it's the X that is the same. So I just need to look at the two Y's and look at the absolute values of the two Y's. I see that this is, has an absolute value of 20 and this has an absolute value of 10. So together, that distance should be 30. And I'll check just to make sure. Again, to go from Q down here to the X axis, that's 20. And then to go to another 10 down to get to T, that's another 10. So that absolute value did work for me, that would be 30. So this side is 30. Now I can infer from a quadrilateral, if one side and it looks like it's parallel, I would probably guess from patterns that that should be 30. I wanna double check it to be sure. Going from R to S, from R to S, we have a match in the X axis. So again, 20 for the absolute value, 10 for the absolute value, it is 30. And again, that would be point, that would be line segment RS is worth 30. And I could assume that this is 20, but it just takes a minute to check. So I might as well check to see what line segment ST is. Again, the coordinates, the Y coordinates are the same. So I'm going to look at what's different. I'm going to look at the X coordinates, absolute value 10, another absolute value 10. So 10 and 10 makes 20. I can check it from the graph too. 10 and another 10 makes 20. So now I have all my signs. So now it's time to answer the question. So for perimeter, perimeter would be all of the distance. That would mean that I would add up those line segments. RQ, QT, ST, and RS. So I just will go around and add them up. 20 and 30 and 20 and 30. So 20 and 30, another 20, another 30. I can see this is 50, that's another 50. So it makes 100. 100 units because I don't know what these are in. 100 units. Mm -hmm. That's what the perimeter is. And it's always helpful to circle your answer. A lot of work for that answer. I want to make sure we don't lose it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to work on the area then. It's a polygon, so my formula for the area is base times height. I can call this the base, this the base, and this is the height. So the base would be whatever ST is, and the height would be whatever QT is. So now I'm going to substitute ST is 20, QT is 30, 20 times 30 is 600, and that would be units squared, or I would write it as units squared or squared units either way. Sometimes we say that first. That part's a little hard to see. Okay. I'm going to turn that in there. Move it towards, yeah, that's good. All right. So I'm going to move it towards me. So one more time, the area then is base times height. This line segment was the base. This line segment is the height. 20 was the, the base. 30 is the height. 20 times 30, what I did is I did two times three, which was six, and then I knew it was 20 and 30, so we had two more zeros there. So I could write it as units with the little power two, or I could write it as unit squared or squared units. 
that's the answer to number nine on the are you ready to go on.